Good morning, it is Jane with Scratastic Yarns, and here today on hashtag 50 gone by 2024, we are going to discuss yoga for weight loss. Just thought it might be interesting. As always, here's the medical disclaimer. Always check with your physician before starting any exercise program or diet regimen. Information here is my personal research into different health topics and not to be considered medical advice. All right. There was a reason that I chose to go with the yoga this week. First of all, I will tell you, I have already reached my 50 gone. Couldn't be more thrilled. Have more to go. But I'm thrilled I finally reached it. Um, but my son has been doing yoga for quite a while. He started with restorative yoga. I'd looked for yoga classes in my area. And the closest was, you know, having to travel to Williamsport back and forth or going to State College. And State College, they wanted $60 for three classes. And that's kind of steep if you ask me. So, we recently in our area got a young lady that opened up a yoga studio. So I am going to be checking that out. So anyway, let's talk about yoga. Yoga for weight loss benefits beyond burning calories. If you have trouble losing weight despite your best efforts, this is because obesity is a complex disease with many causes. A family history of weight issues can make it more likely that you'll have the same issues managing your weight. A diet high in ultra-processed foods, sugar, fat, being sedentary also contribute to weight gain. Some of us are just lucky and fluffy. Stress and struggles with mental health, including medications to treat certain mental health conditions. And here's the big click clincher, as always, poor sleep. And hormonal changes are all factors that further contribute to the weight gain. There are many ways to combat, combat excess weight, but there is no single solution. If you are trying to lose or maintain your weight, you may want to try yoga. There is good research that yoga can help you manage stress, improve your mood, curb emotional eating, and create a community of sport, support, all of which can help with that weight loss and maintenance. Yoga can also help you burn calories, did you know that? As well as increase your muscle mass and tone. Well, we all knew that. Any exercise can do that. Yoga may reduce joint pain, which in turn allows you to exercise more and increase your daily activities. And there are, are a lot more benefits. Um, the biggest thing is it can help you with that stress. You know, we've talked about stress before how it affects weight loss, how it affects your weight, everything else. Um, yoga is derived from the Sanskrit word yuj, which means to unite the body, mind, and emotions. It is a holistic mind-body practice that improves many of the causes of weight gain. Some people may experience stress as physical pain or sleep deprivation. Or it may be a psychological and cause feelings of anxiety and agitation. Stress leads to the increase in the hormone cortisol. Cortisol increases abdominal fat, decreases muscle mass, causes cravings for fat and sugar-rich foods, and can lead to obesity. Surprise, surprise. Yoga can decrease your stress and your cortisol levels, enhance your mood, decrease anxiety and depression, improve sleep, and improve chronic conditions such as hypertension and diabetes, reducing the need for medications that can cause weight gain. Yoga is not a band-aid for excess weight, but it may work on underlying conditions and causes. Its benefit extend beyond the calories in versus calories out equation. And we all know that has very little to do with anything. 
We've studied that, right? Dana, you know. All right. Yoga can improve mindfulness related to eating behaviors. Most of us who crave ice cream after 9 p.m. or can't stop eating potato chips know that these behaviors hurt our chances of losing weight. We all know that eating vegetables, whole grains, lean protein is good for our health and weight. While this knowledge is necessary, it seems insufficient for us to stick to those healthy eating plans. One of yoga's benefits is that it improves mindfulness of the body and awareness of body sensations. That is why yoga is called moving meditation. Research shows that you don't have to have any formal sitting meditation to get the mindfulness benefits of yoga. That's good. A lot of people have trouble sitting still for med meditation. By improving mindfulness, yoga decreases emotional eating, stress eating, and binge eating. These habits sabotage our weight loss efforts and can cause a negative spiral of guilt and shame, which often leads to folks just giving up. So, uh, a study that was published in 2015 showed that practicing yoga can lead to healthier eating, including a lower fat intake and increase in vegetables and whole grains. The bottom line, the best diet plan is one that you can stick with over the long term and by improving mindfulness, yoga can help you make those healthier food choices. A yoga community can provide acceptance and support. While going to the gym can often be intimidating and provoke feelings of not belonging, for some people with larger bodies, by contrast, yoga culture embodies kindness, support, and self-acceptance. In other words, namaste. They honor the spiritual within you. Yoga teachers and advanced practitioners can serve as role models and inspire newer students to live a healthier lifestyle. And Richard's research shows that those social networks influence the behaviors that affect weight. The yoga network increases, encourages positive health behaviors. And being a part of that kind of community can be a meaningful difference for weight loss. And this type of community can be hard to find with other types of exercise. Isn't that true? Have you ever been in a gym, gym and there's a lot of competition? It's crazy. Practitioners should look for a safe, comfortable environment. A welcoming yoga group that may help you improve your self-esteem and confidence. You want to find a local studio that feels nurturing and not overwhelming with other practitioners at your level. Teachers can help beginners or those with physical limitations by modifying the poses. You might have to try a few different classes before, before you find an instructor or class that you like. But don't give up after the first one. Go back. Try another. If you can't find a local studio, as always, there's YouTube and Instagram with classes at all levels. Instructors that do understand what it's like to be a larger size. So they will give you body firming attitude that shows yoga is not just for the little skinny people. But it's for you guys too. Um, and many times they're going to share those inspirational uh, stories to get you going. I don't know if you've ever seen the video on YouTube and Instagram of the fellow that couldn't walk and now he's walking and doing all kinds of things. He achieved that through yoga practice. Um, benefits are universal. So uh, it doesn't matter your size or shape. It can take weeks or months to establish that yoga practice. Frequent practice is key for long lasting effects and benefits. There is this idea that it takes anywhere from 21 days to 60 days to incorporate a good habit. So, 
Will it help build muscle and burn fat? And yes, it does. There are a lot of things that yoga does because it is very beneficial for the weight when, when, when practiced with behavioral intervention for weight management, as well as combining it with a calorie fat reduced diet could help those with weight loss. But follow your physician's advice. Also, yoga can also improve cardiorespiratory fitness in addition to promoting weight loss. And it is also linked to being able to keep the weight loss after you use it, lose it. But how effective is it for weight loss really depends on the type of yoga. Adding that there are a lot of different types of yoga. If you are looking for a yoga that is a weight loss tool, she suggests using vinyasa and a lot of restorative type of yoga because it's just more active, builds more heat and muscle. So, there are a lot of benefits to yoga. Let's go into a few of them. It burns calories. However, it is hard to put an exact number on those calories that are burned with yoga because there are so many different practices out there and those can be very different. You can maybe expect about 120 calories for a 30 minute session. Overall, yoga burns less calories than many forms of exercise. However, higher intensity sessions with a longer duration may burn more calories. Keep in mind though that if weight loss is your goal, you should do other workouts on top of yoga. The type of yoga that has the highest likelihood to promote weight loss is high intensity interval training. We have talked about that before, HITT. It busts stress. Stress causes your body to store fat, especially in the belly area. Exercises that promote mindfulness like yoga can help lower those levels of stress and can help you maintain or lower your body fat. It is considered a mindful practice that reduces stress. And it can help with sleep. Being mindful and less stressful can improve your sleep. Um, it does lead to a better regulation of the pathways of your brain that regulate weight. So people who regularly slept less than recommended seven hours a night, God, it'd be nice for seven hours a night, were more likely to have a higher average body mass index and develop obesity than those who slept more. So there are ways to get started at home. You really don't need a lot of uh, equipment. They do suggest that you get a high quality yoga mat, one that provides enough conditioning for your body so you can comfortably work through the moves without sliding around. You can also benefit from having a block and strap to help you if you have tight hamstrings or hips. The biggest thing is actually finding a class either local or even online. Um, you know, that you can stream, like Peloton. I believe they have yoga and, uh, goodness gracious. Xfinity has one, and I can't remember the name of it, Fitness Goals or something like that. So, there are seven yoga poses that they suggest you try at home. And one is Downward Dog. Downward Dog as you bend your body into a V-shape with your feet on the ground, with your toes facing forward, and your hands on the ground in front of you. Holding this position can help your arms, legs, and abs. Then there is the Plank. This position involves holding your body in a straight, horizontal line with your hands and toes on the ground. Holding this pose will activate your core. Then there is side plank. Side plank is similar to a regular plank, just with one arm and leg on the ground while the other is balanced above it. It also activates your core and as well as your side oblique muscles. Chair pose. 
Start from standing and then bend at your knees while pushing your butt back like you're sitting down in an invisible chair. You get good glute and quad activity. You do. Warrior. This involves standing with both feet rooted into the ground. Your back leg is in front of your front. No, it can't be in front of your front. Your back leg is behind your front with the back foot angled outward as your front foot points forward. Your front knee should be bent while your back leg is straight. Your upper body should be straight with your head and torso pointed in front of you. Your arms and hands are held above you. All of the warrior poses are great for activating your legs and your cores. And that's warrior one. Warrior two is similar. However, your arms should be at a straight horizontal, horizontal line and your to torso should open up to one side. Warrior three involves shifting your weight forward from one so that you're balanced on one straight leg. Your arms are typically held straight out in front of you, horizontal to the ground. So, if you are interested in that, you should, if you do not have a local studio, go and find you some exercises through YouTube through certified yoga instructors. Okay? Now, I'm going to leave a link down below to a story. It's a basically a blog type, but um, the woman states she lost 85 pounds with nothing but a yoga mat, and here's how it happened. So I'm going to leave that link down below, as well as another link. The other link is actually going to show you videos of those actual yoga poses, as well as a few off, a few more. Um, they do suggest how often do you want to do, uh, should you do yoga to lose weight. Um, they want you to practice it as often as possible in order to lose weight. You can do a more active, intense practice at least three to five times per week, at least one hour. Um, there are other days, balance out those with something that is a more relaxing, gentle class, like Hatha, Yin, or Restorative Yoga. If you're a beginner, start slowly. Start with 20-minute practice and build up from there. That allows you to build up the strength and flexibility and prevent injuries. Allow yourself one full day of rest each week. You want to combine your yoga activities practice with walking, cycling, or swimming for the added cardiovascular benefits. As a part of your routine, avoid weighing yourself directly after a yoga class. Especially hot yoga, since you may actually gain during that class. Instead, weigh yourself same time each day. My advice is just weigh yourself maybe once a week or every other week. Don't get, don't get focused on the weight. Many times as you're building muscle, you're actually gaining muscle mass, which weighs more than fat. So don't worry about the weights. Worry about the way your clothes are fitting, that kind of thing. Speaking of clothes, uh, the last pair of jeans that I had fitted and I had actually uh, done some alterations to so that they fit, no longer fit. Uh, when I was looking at those clothes, I determined, you know, I'm going to have to take up probably at least a good four inches, uh, two inches off each side. And I thought, you know what, that's too much. It's got a flat felt seam on the jeans. Don't want to mess with it. The only thing I'm upset about is it's got a beautiful flower embroidery down one of the legs. So, anyway, I'm going to give those up to Goodwill and purchase another pair. All right, guys, that is it. Um, as always, make sure that you are following the advice of your physician health care providers. Don't do any of this without asking them first. Um, the links for the videos will also be below 
the link for the story about losing 85 pounds. And that is it for today's um, 50 Gone by 2024. So I will see you again soon. Everybody have a great week. Remember to be kind to one another. Be kind to yourself. Love yourself. Love others. And get out there and see this big, beautiful world we live in. See you again soon. Bye.